Super. So, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Soha Youssef, and I'm convening the seminar series on behalf of UNU Merit and Maastricht University in the Netherlands. The migration seminar series invites researchers, practitioners, policymakers, and others to discuss their work related to migration. Before I will introduce today's speakers, there's some housekeeping that I'll need to do. Our speaker's talk today will last approximately 40 minutes, after which we'll have 20 minutes for uh, discussion and questions from the audience. I'd like to ask you to keep your questions until after our speakers uh, are done with their presentation. You can either put the question in the chat box and I can read it out loud for you, or you can raise your hand with the raise your hand function on Zoom. I will then allocate turns. Uh, please, in the meantime, keep your microphones uh, muted. Your camera can be turned on if you would like. Uh, but please be aware that we are recording the seminar for distribution via our YouTube channel later. On our YouTube channel, you can also find recordings of uh, previous migration seminars in the past years. And then now let me introduce you to our speakers. Uh, we're very happy to welcome Dr. Özge uh, Gukdemir and Professor Devirim Dümludag. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gukdemir is currently an associate professor at Istanbul University. Professor Dümludag is currently a full-time professor at Marmara University in Istanbul. Uh, Dr. Gugdemir's um, primary areas of interest include behavioral economics, subjective well-being, and happiness economics. Professor Dumludag's primary area of interest encompass economic development and in institutions, behavioral economics, and happiness economics. Uh, Dr. Gugdemir and uh, Professor Dumludag are currently collaborating on two projects at Maastricht University. I won't take much longer. They can, they're going to anyway talk to us today about all uh, about their papers. So uh, I'll give the floor to uh, Dr. Gugdemir and Professor Dumludak. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us. Actually, it's going to be our second presentation in uh, Unimerit. Uh, the first one was like 11 years ago at the Freitas building, it was face to face, now it's going to be an online meeting, so we are very happy to be together again. So I will make the presentation, it's better for me to share my screen to you. Uh, is it okay? Can you see that? Okay. So, uh, so today's presentation will be about the competition behavior of women, uh, but we are going to focus on the uh, ethnic uh, minority women in the Netherlands. And let me start, whoops, I cannot, okay, yeah. Is it moving, yeah? Okay, so um, there are actually many papers uh, focusing on the willingness uh, to compete and the most of those papers are centered around two published papers by Genizzi et al and Netherlands Westerland. And the work has been done so far um, show that men and women may differ in the way they respond to competitive environments. Men are men tend to be more willing to seek a competitive environment than uh, women. And there are a lot of um, studies. Uh, I mean, a lot of studies linked those exp experimental measures of willingness to compete to career choices, because. Um, to get high paying and prestigious job, uh, uh, you have to, you know, uh, compete for them, uh, applying for promotions or new positions or bargaining for higher wages are also uh, a competitive activities. However, we don't see that much of studies uh, focusing on ethnic minority groups, uh, especially for the Netherlands. And our uh, aim is kind of filling this gap. So as I told you before that uh, men, to, men tend to be more willing to seek competitive environments, but women uh, decline it. Uh, there are several explanations in the literature uh, for women. Uh, for example, uh, they found that women have uh, this days of competition. Uh, women are more risk averse. Uh, they have lower confidence than men. And also they are more sensitive to negative feedbacks. 
Well, when we go to the migration feature uh, on the right side, the first two studies are experimental studies, and the rest, uh, Farquhar studies on uh, Karen and Farquhar et al. in 2018, there are also migration-related studies. We find the same explanation for migrants as well. Um, Actually, um, the reason for those similarities uh, lies in the fact that these subgroups are part of a larger main group known as a disadvantaged group. So who are those disadvantaged, who are, who are the people who uh, belong to disadvantaged group are like females, migrants, uh, refugees, or uh, disabled people can be an example of the uh, people in the disadvantaged groups. And today, a lot of study or policy are uh, focusing on promoting fairness and diversity, not only in the workplace, but in the society as a whole. Uh, because if people from disadvantaged groups um, avoid competition, first, it will not only reduce the participation and winning opportunities of those people, but also it will limit their chances of success and promotions and higher paying jobs. And as a result, this will lead to an inefficient use of human resources in the country. As I told you before, PEV, uh, uh, I mean, PEV, I think you know it, is uh, an American research center, and one of their future simulation is kind of, you know, minorities are going to uh, constitute an important share of the world population. And for the 20 by the second half of the 21st century, minorities will constitute more than half of the world population. And as a result, the economic preferences and behaviors of those individuals, uh, the people from the minority group, uh, will significantly impact future economic outcomes of uh, certain countries. Here is the uh, income uh, immigrant statistics uh, immigrant groups uh, numbers uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, actually, left side has been studied a lot, but right side is not that studied. Uh, it has not that study has not been studied that much. Uh, for the non-Western immigrants, uh, Turkish people, Moroccan people, Sunnis people, Indonesian people, and Dutch Caribbeans like Antillean people are living in the Netherlands. Um, and for the Western immigrants, there are a lot of German people, Polish people, uh, Belgian people, uh, British people, and Italian people are living in the Netherlands. And the ratio of immigrants living in the Netherlands to the general population is 25%. I mean, uh, it's very <laughs> difficult for me to give those studies to the people who are working on migration <laughs> studies, but uh, it's better for me to give a little bit of them. Uh, so, um, however, when we look to the um, to the income levels or employment status of those people, non-Western immigrants have the lowest employment rates and lowest uh, income levels compared to uh, in the Netherlands compared to the Western immigrants and Dutch natives, and the percentage of non-Western immigrants with equal human capital and efficiency to that of native people working in senior management positions is like 3.6. So this is called uh, an ethnic penalty. And how about being a female migrant uh, in the Netherlands? Uh, there are a lot of studies uh, on female migrants living in the Netherlands. For example, there are some field studies like sending resumes to companies and other things. And women uh, from non-Western migrants, uh, non-Western background, are less likely to be invited to interviews. And the um, level of discrimination decreases, increases substantially if the uh, applicant is wearing a headscarf. So ethnic minority women are facing kind of a double penalty due to both their ethnicity and their gender. And this is called the double penalty. And what happens uh, as a result? Uh, the discrimination or the fear of it can influence people, uh, since we are focusing on women, it's women, uh, from diverse ethnic backgrounds to display a unique competitive behavior and choose different career paths, although they have potential. So these people have potential, but, but they are, you know, uh, they, they just don't want to. They just step back. They just want, don't want to compete. They just don't want to be the leader in a, a company or uh, something like that. 
So uh, we really would like to see that one uh, by using some experiments. And thanks to uh, list data, list data is uh, an online uh, data um, that, that has been provided by uh, Tilburg University. There are two experiments on that. Uh, in March 2017, Booster and Osterbeek conducted an online experiment on this. It was a hypothetical experiment. And one year later, an incentivized experiment was conducted by, again, uh, Booster. Uh, and the first experiment, as I told you, was a hypothetical experiment. It was a pretty simple experiment, actually, just adding two digit numbers together, uh, like that one. Uh, respondents have five minutes to solve as many as problems possible, uh, but they have to choose between two payment options. The first option is piece rate option, and the other one is competition option. In the piece rate option, respondents receive one euro for each correct answer, and they will uh, add all, no all those numbers individually. But for the competition, uh, participants will compete with three other panel members who are randomly selected from the list panel. If they have more correct answer, they earn four euros per each correct answer. But if they have less correct answer, they're going to earn zero otherwise. Uh, for the incentivized experiment, it's a very uh, familiar experiment for us because it's the Netherlands Westerlands experiment. It's, um, they're using matrices, uh, as uh, shown uh, in the slide. Uh, so respondents, again, have to solve the problems. They have to choose two numbers that add up to 100. There are three rounds. Each round lasts for uh, two minutes, and uh, participants has to solve as many matrices as possible. And before the third round, they have to choose between, again, uh, two options, piece rate or tournament payment options. The first one is the piece rate payment. Um, they, ha they, uh, they will earn 40 cents per salt matrix, uh, correct the salt matrix, irrespective of uh, performance compared to others. For the competition one, uh, they are going to earn 80 cents for outperforming a randomly selected participant. Uh, and the participant, again, um, selected, will be selected from the list panel, but uh, they will earn uh, zero cents otherwise. So it's the sum of the two experiments. So for the piece rate, a hypothetical, the hypothetical one, they're going to earn one euro. For the competition, they're going to earn uh, four euros. For the incentivized one, uh, for the piece rate, they're going to earn 40 cents. Uh, for the competition, they're going to earn eight cents. And this is the uh, sample. It's a pretty big sample, actually. For the hypothetical one, uh, there are 5,040 individuals. For the incentivized one, it's 2,003 uh, individuals, and uh, there are people from Western background and non-Western background in both experiments. What we don't see from which um, group are they coming from, we can see only if they are from the non-Western background or uh, if they are from the Western background. I mean, we cannot see that they are Turkish or Sudanese or German or Polish. We can catch them from the language spoken is spoken at home, but it's not that much actually. So, I mean, um, the response rate is not that high. So it's not uh, actually uh, very. I mean, we couldn't get we couldn't uh, quote it actually. So this is the descriptive, uh, and since we are focusing on competitiveness, we have seen a different thing over there because we are expecting the other way around, actually, because we found that non-Western people are more willing, uh, willing to compete than Dutch people and the Western people, uh, both in hypothetical experiments and incentivized experiments. This is the ratio. Uh, so zero is uh, zero goes for peace rate and one goes for uh, a, a competition. So 41 uh, percentage of the people uh, of the non-Western people are more willing are willing to uh, compete. 31 percentage of Western people are willing to compete. 24 percentage of Dutch people are willing to compete uh, in the hypothetical one. And in, in, in the incentivized one, uh, 30 percentage of non-Western people are willing to compete. Western people are like 20 percentage. And for the Dutch people, it's like 28 percentage. 
And uh, there are some questions uh, related with risk and confidence. They are very important to control in the competition experiments as well. For the risk question, uh, I mean, the question asked for risk is uh, indicate to what extent you are generally willing to take risk. Uh, zero goes for completely unwilling and 10 goes for completely willing. For the confidence, uh, the question asked is how do you think you scared to, you scored compared to other participants? Uh, zero goes for worst and 10 goes for the best. So we have age, income and education. Uh, these are from background uh, list uh, questions. Let me move. So this is the first result for uh, probit regression result for the whole sample. And uh, so the Dutch uh, is our reference category. We have non-Western immigrants and Western immigrants. And in both experiments for the hypothetical one and for the incentivized one, non-Western people uh, are more willing to, to go for competition uh, than uh, Dutch people. Uh, we have seen only one significant uh, result for Western immigrants uh, uh, in incentivized experiments. So Western migrants are less willing to compete than uh, the Dutch people, uh, but it's not significant for hypothetical one. Uh, risk and confidence are both uh, significant associated with uh, uh, competition. And we have controls like age, household size, gender, education, marital status, uh, logarithmic income, employment, and big five. Uh, for the incentivized ones, since uh, 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 the question asked in uh, the uh, before the third round, it's kind of a conditional thing. So we add uh, the um, round scores, the first uh, round and second round scores for incentivized one. And then uh, we would like, we wanted to see if there are differences between uh, women and men. So we run the regression for only uh, women sample. And for the women, uh, non-Western female migrants are more willing to compete than Dutch people, both in hypothetical one and in Southwest one. We haven't seen any significancy for Western female migrants. Risk was, um, again, uh, significantly associated with competition. Confidence was not as, um, significant for hypothetical one, but for the incentivized one, again, uh, it was uh, significantly associated with uh, competition. And then we thought, OK, maybe it can be a, um, a cultural thing. OK, men could be non-Western men, I'm talking. Men could be more willing to uh, compete than Dutch people, uh, but we haven't seen any significant results for males, actually. So non-Western male migrants were, uh, I mean, it was not significant. Only uh, the significant one was uh, Western male migrants. Western male migrants were uh, less willing to compete than uh, Dutch males for in, in incentivized experiment, but we couldn't see any significant results for hypothetical one. Both risk and confidence were significantly associated with uh, competition. Uh, actually, um, this allows us to see from which generation is the migrant uh, from. Uh, so we uh, divided uh, the um, non-Western uh, category into two, the first generation of non-Western women, second generation of non-Western women, and uh, we divided that category for Western women as well. And it was pretty amazing for us because it was the first generation of non-Western women who were more willing to compete than uh, Dutch females. We couldn't see any significance for second generation of non-Western women. So the more they integrate to the society, they, uh, that means that they uh, become to, uh, they um, start to act like uh, the Dutch females, maybe. Uh, and we couldn't see any significance for the first generation or uh, second generation of uh, non-Western women. So uh, after we got those results, um, we also had a chance to talk with Thomas Pieser. And we told him that, OK, you made the experiment, so it's better to hear your comments. And he uh, actually suggested us to uh, find some papers. And afterwards, we found more papers about that. Uh, so we really wanted to see the main reason behind that, actually, because we were exp ex expecting the other way around. But we have seen that one. 
And then in the literature, we come up with a gender equality and competition preferences, actually. Uh, there are two papers who uh, were published in Journal of Economic Behavior and uh, Organization, which is a very important uh, journal in, uh, in the economics, economics field. Uh, uh, both papers found that studies conducted in countries with higher gender equality tend to reveal larger gender gaps in tournament entry. The tournament entry is um, uh, selecting the competition. Uh, so it's kind of, yeah, okay, they, they really would like to uh, compete. And uh, what is this gender gap? So they found the same result that in gender equal societies, men tend to be more willing to seek out competitive environments than women. And as you know that in uh, non-Western countries, the patriarchal values and traditional roles are strong. And uh, in Makovsky and Bablo's paper, it was written that so equal resource access can lead to vari varied uh, gender preferences as women focus less on survival and independence. But in uh, non-Western countries, it's the other way around. They really in a kind of a survival mood. Uh, so competition behavior may be influenced by their focus on meeting basic needs and ensuring independence. And uh, there is another paper from Falk and Hermel. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty amazing paper actually with a lot of citations. Uh, actually, they did not focus on competition behavior, but they did focus on several um, economic preferences. And uh, they found the same result, like in countries with more economic development and gender equality, larger gender gaps in economic preferences are observed. So uh, again, we uh, understood that maybe it can be um, um, maybe the reason behind it uh, can be related with gender equality of the certain country. Um, Actually, uh, so let me go back. <laughs> Actually, so we said, okay, we have to do some robustness then. What can we do? Okay, uh, we have to focus on the first generation of non-Western immigrants because they are coming from, you know, uh, less gender equal societies. If we can find, um, uh, like, um, uh, a significant, uh, uh, so if so, let, let, let me <laughs> okay. Uh, let me uh, use. Uh, let, let me say it again. So we have to focus on the first generation of non-Western immigrants, and uh, so as it is written over there, so um, uh, countries with higher gender equality tend to reveal larger gender gaps in tournament entry. If we are focusing on a country or the people who are coming from a less gender equal societies, then uh, maybe there will be another gender gap, but the um, sign will be different. I mean, maybe women will be more willing to compete or there will be maybe there will be no difference between men and uh, women. So we checked it. And as you can see, we found both results for the first generation of non-Western immigrants. Gender was significant in a hypothetical experiment, but women more are, were more willing to compete than men. For the incentivized one, we didn't see any significances. So it's, uh, it was completely different than uh, gender equal societies. On the other hand, as I told you before, that risk is very important to use. So uh, the, in the literature, it has been found that um, the more they take risk, the more they uh, compete, actually, would like to compete. Uh, so we took the risk variable as the dependent variable. And we have seen that non-Western migrants are less willing to take risks uh, or they are risk averse people than uh, Dutch people. Uh, for the hypothetical one, for the incentivized one, we couldn't see any significancy. We also uh, run the regression for female migrants, and we found the same result. And we also run the regression uh, for uh, the generations, and we found the same result. So we can say that the um, the uh, results lies solely on uh, competitive behavior rather than risk behavior. So in conclusion, it was a pretty fast uh, presentation. We can say that the first generation of non-Western women show a stronger competitive inclination. 
this emphasizes the importance of cultural and social factors in understanding competitiveness. And competitive preferences vary not only across countries, but within the countries, because there are a lot of people uh, coming from different uh, cultures, different um, gender equality contexts, and so on. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Oske. Um, thank you for this very interesting presentation. Uh, let's right away open the floor for questions, comments. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, feel free to just use the raise the button function or write your uh, question in the chat box. Melissa, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. So this paper is super interesting and I think adds a, a lot to the literature. So I actually have a couple of questions and maybe more clarification also for some things. So um, I was actually wondering if you could even be a little bit more precise. So you first um, kind of run the whole sample and just and look at differences between Western and non-Western, and then you split the sample by by gender. But I'm actually wondering if you could actually maybe in the in the first sample just use a lot of interactions to almost be able to show um, um, a continuum of kind of who's who's willing to accept the most competition and who's willing to accept the least competition with all of your, I guess, six, no, eight groups. So between Dutch men and women, um, non-Western men and women, and then Western men and women. So six groups to actually see who is willing to have the most competition and who is willing to have the least competition or no, then, then you could even add more. So interact the generation, right? And then put everything on a on a spectrum because right now, okay, it's clear that at least on the women's side, the first generation non-Western women are kind of are pushing the results, right? Um, but I'm interested if you would compare that first generation non-Western women to men and different men's groups what that would exactly mean. So I think it would be really interesting to almost put them on a competition continuum of who's willing to accept the most competition and the least competition based on these different subsets. So I think that would actually be really, really interesting. Actually, um, I did that. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, I received the same result. Okay. No, no, not, not that you would receive a different result, but I'm actually interested in where yeah. everybody falls in, okay. the, in the continuum. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can say something about that already uh i mean i i i didn't that do i didn't do it like that way uh but i can it's a great idea i can uh, work on it uh but i did kind of you know uh run in the regression for the whole sample I just um um splitting the groups like non-western females western females and first generation females and second generation females and run that in the uh, whole sample Mm -hmm. And uh, we received the same results. But the first generation of non-Western uh, migrant women are the women who are more willing to uh, compete than uh, the others. But they are the people who are more willing to compete than the others. Or the... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so but they are more competitive like than the... everyone. Yeah. So also exactly. the men, also the non-Western yeah. men. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone, yeah. Yeah, so super interesting. But I still think it would be interesting to show yeah. this and then see mm -hmm. where the other groups kind of fall, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and then as far as the explanation for this, um, so of course, part of the story could be survival, but I think the bigger story is probably more just about grabbing opportunities and grabbing opportunities that they're not used to having. And I don't think that this is all about survival, mm -hmm. but more about um, really understanding the payoff and the difference between having opportunities in one place versus having opportunities in another place. Um, so I, I, you know, compare it with the literature that you've looked at and what you've seen from the other studies, I'm not sure that it's only a kind of survival story, but really more about kind of making the most of what you have when you have the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much for your comments because those comments are very useful for us. Uh, we are a little bit limited on that topic actually. Mm -hmm. So if you can provide us any paper and other things, we will be very, very appreciated about it. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know if papers off the top of my head, but I would uh, definitely suggest to more 
I don't know, um, search the liter in literature in this respect. Disrespect. Of of this respect, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So more like taking advantage of opportunities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and how that's different for men and women and especially in these more like unequal situations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I think those were, yeah. I mean, of course there's, there's, there's less that you can do also because you don't know exactly which countries people are coming yeah, from yeah, and, and these things. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Of course you don't have that, that as an option. So, um, in this experiment that it comes from, were people just asked what they identify with or, or how was the, how were they actually categorized? Um, so, um, uh, they have the high comps group, uh, question. So they have to, um, select, uh, the category, actually the person who are on uh, the list panel. So they're mm -hmm. kind of Dutch. First generation of non-Western, uh, second generation of non-Western, first generation of Western, and second generation of Western. So they have to select that one. Okay, and that's and those are the answer categories they were given from the beginning. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I understand. Well, it was thanks. Not related with the uh, birthplace of parents and other things, so they just asked it to the respondents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the question on the language spoken at home just did a lot of people not answer the question. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. That will be great. I mean, we could catch it from that, but we couldn't, I mean, the response rate is so, so low. Yeah. No, no, I understand. Yeah. All right. Well, super, super interesting. Thank you so much. I can also read a comment in the chat box. We have a comment from Jules. Um, and I'll read it, uh, Clarita uh, Gergsani, I have no idea how to pronounce that family name, is writing a lot uh, about women and competition. She uh, also has a paper exploring, exploring the mechanism behind it, and she argues that it has to do with warmth, a stereotype. Women should take into account how this actions, these actions affect others. Uh, the stereotype might vary across countries of origin, and he also shared a link. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I see none. So uh, with that, one, go ahead. Sorry. I... Yeah, there is a full out. Okay, again, an art a paper suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it was sent to you on the private, uh, on a, in a private message. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I think so, because I don't see it. Okay, okay, thank you. But as long as you receive it, then it's uh, perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Sorry, I see also a question uh, from Hope, but why is the case that women are more competitive? Uh, sorry, what, uh, I couldn't understand the question. So I, I I read as Hope Wright said, uh, why is the case that women are more competitive? She means first generation women. Why are they more competitive? Actually, uh, in our opinion, it was related with uh, gender equality, but also uh, Melissa suggested us to uh, go for this respect literature. So maybe it's going to be related with uh, that literature as well. Like, OK, I thank you very much again for the comments, Melissa. Uh, okay, uh, any more questions? Uh -huh. Make a run through, nothing. Super. Thank you so much again, Devrim and Ozge, for your time. Okay. Uh, it was very pleasant to have you on uh, our November Migration Seminar Series for the second time, and we hope to continue working with you in the future. Uh, thank you, everyone, awesome. for joining thank us. Um, thank you so much. Keep, keep an eye on our events page on you and your merit. Um, if you'd like to be um, in the news uh, paper where you get often the events, please let me know, write me an email and tell you how to do it. Uh, otherwise, wait for the um, seminar to be published on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank Bye you everyone. Bye.